this book. It's an exciting new chapter in the sector's history in Canada. And we're looking forward to sharing intersections and innovations, change for Canada's voluntary and nonprofit sector with Canadians across the country and our international colleagues. Bob, when you floated this idea, what, some four years ago now, why did you think there was a need for a book about Canada's nonprofit sector? And why did the Matard Foundation decide to support this work? You know, Susan, whenever I've been invited to Carleton or to anywhere else to, um, to be a, a guest lecturer on things related to the sector, I lamented over the fact that, that there were no Canadian readings to refer people to. Uh, I would have to send, give them copies of material that, that related to the US or the UK, sometimes to Australia, but we didn't have a ready source of Canadian literature that was accessible to people who were just starting their understanding of the sector. And that's one of the things I'm glad we've now rectified through this book. But we wanted to do more than that. We wanted to reinforce and, and build a community of scholarship. And, and that community of scholarship is already there to some extent, but it's fragmented. It's not very visible. So what I wanted to do was in the process of, of the many chapters in this book to bring together established and emerging scholars from different disciplines across the country. And we succeeded in doing it. We have 52 authors and 36 chapters in this, in this book. I think one of the things that makes this unique amongst texts that I've looked at, Susan, is the broad range of topics. I mean, we cover everything from history to regulation, to social innovation, to rules on, on business activities, to fundraising. In one sense, we tried to do the impossible with this book, but I think we pulled it off. That is, we want it to be used by upper undergraduate and, and graduate students, but we also wanted it to be used by practitioners, policymakers, uh, and an informed public who works with the sector. It's coming out at a time when the sector and philanthropy is undergoing enormous change in, in every sense. And that was deliberative and, it, and we couldn't foresee when we started this project, the enormity of the change that would be underway, but some of it was certainly in motion. That idea of intersections across uh, the private sector and, and the public sector and the philanthropic sector, and just the need for, uh, and, and the ability of the sector to innovate and, and do things, to do things differently. So even though we started it before the pandemic turned the world on its head, the content is more relevant than ever. We were and are excited um, to make this available as broadly as possible. Um, one of the other things that I'm hoping is going to happen is because it's not behind a paywall, because it's so accessible, that some of our international colleagues, both in the sector and in academia, are going to use it as a basis for comparative research. Uh, I think there's a lot we can learn from other countries, but I think there's also a lot we can teach other countries. Agreed, Bob. And, and one of the things that I hope the book also does is help us really think about what's distinctive about the Canadian context, our sector, our, our version of philanthropy, and to build on what's good about that and to fix the things that perhaps aren't so good. Finally, thanks to all of the contributors. You made this book and we are grateful to your, to your insights and your, your hard work throughout it. Thank you for joining us. As we launched this book, which you can now find live on our website at www.matart.org slash intersections.